snow lands on top. Get ready, because you're going to be hearing that a lot if you go and read A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Which I have not. You read. have not. I will be reading this month. You're going to get there. Yes. This is the latest, but also the earliest, of the uh, Hunger Games stories, in that it is just recently come out, and it is a prequel story. It is telling you the story of President Coriolanus Snow and how he went from where he started to where we find him uh, when we come into Hunger Games. And so before you get into this, what what is your preconceived notions of this book? Honestly, I have none. I heard Hunger Games. I heard prequel. I heard snow and I was like pre-order and uh then after that I have heard people say oh I can't get on board with this I don't like it very disappointing etc uh so that's where I am with it right now I do want to ask though is this a standalone or is there room for other prequels you said it goes up to Hunger Games it doesn't actually bring you straight up to Hunger Games this tells the story of one of the earlier Hunger Games it tells you the oh, origins gotcha. of the Hunger Games. In this, and boy, this doesn't spoil just about anything, when they first started the Hunger Games, the uh, mentors for the contestants were school kids from the capital. Oh, wow. And Coriolanus is one of those. And he is assigned one of the worst prospects. Not only in those early Hunger Games does the girls not have a very good chance, and he's assigned a girl. He's assigned a girl from one of the least respected districts, a coal mining district of District 12. We all know about District 12, don't we? Yeah. Which, I mean, also kind of brings up the fact that if you've read Hunger Games, no spoilers, there's really only, with the exception of Katniss and Peeta, as far as champions go, there's only one, and that's... Uh, Their mentor. We forget his name. Yeah, He's that a drunkard. Dude. And you would be too. Be honest. <laughs> if you went into the Hunger Games and you survived it, you would have alcohol Fully trauma. Problems. Fully trauma. Yeah. So yes, that makes total sense. Okay. So yeah, he goes in and he thinks he's about to lose. And that means a lot because the Snows are down on their luck. Ever since the big war, their family went from being super rich to being penniless. Mm. And this is his chance if his contestant wins the Hunger Games to go on to having good things in life again. So do you feel like learning about Snow in this context, do you think it gives you more sympathy to his character or are you still kind of like eh, I don't know about this guy? This, I disagree with a lot of those people but I understand why they didn't like this. Okay. Because Snow I never sympathized with him. Even though he is the protagonist, he does have prejudices, but he is not one of those that's horrible about it. Oh, gotcha. He is primarily selfish and controlling and conniving. And seeing it as it plays out, the way that this story goes and how it parallels with the rest of the Hunger Games, it gives you reasons for one of my biggest uh, gripes about the Hunger Games series, and that's in Catching Fire... How he's just like, no, Katniss is going back into those games. I'm going to try and kill her this time. I hate her so much. This explains why. Oh, very good. There's a very good reason why he hates Katniss. And we're going to find out why in this book. Excellent. What it was your... I gave it four stars. I, I enjoyed it. I understand why some people cannot get behind Snow. I respect that. I understood him. I've had other characters that I've read that I liked least, less than I've liked him, so yeah. That makes sense. So thank you so much for watching, and uh, later on I'll be doing a Lainey's Catch Us Up video telling you my thoughts about this. But until next time, stay Lainey! Bye-bye!